Today we are looking at proof from first principles to do with the product rule. The previous videos have looked at proof of chain rule using first principles and the first video that I uploaded regarding differentiation was to do with just the generic proof from first principles which is what you look at in year 12. Okay, so just bearing in mind what the product rule is and that is where two functions are being multiplied. Okay, so if y equals f of x g of x which is where the two functions are being multiplied then dy by dx the derivative of that whole function is f of x times by the derivative of g of x plus g of x multiplied by the derivative of f of x and we are now trying to prove that that is the derivative of the function where two functions are being multiplied. So that's what we're trying to prove now. So we'll start with how I always start, just draw a general curve. And we pick two points on there. So this particular curve is of this function here. That means if I pick first coordinate on there, my coordinate would be x and the y coordinate would be f of x, g of x. That's my first coordinate. The second coordinate I'll pick is gap of h away, which means that coordinate is x plus h, which means it will impact the y coordinates making them f of x plus h times by g of x plus h. Very important to just get your basic understanding first of these coordinates and then putting them in practice. And we start writing the proof now. So we start with dy by dx equals limit as h tends towards zero dy by dx is the gradient function and the gradient function is what we're trying to find out is the difference between the y coordinates which is the difference between this coordinate and this coordinate here all over x plus h minus x which is the difference between the x coordinates and you may remember that last time when we were trying to prove the chain rule I kept the denominator consistent throughout and I did not cancel out the x's and that was for me to show you at the end of the proof the similarity between the format that we see in the formula booklet and where it's actually come from and making sure you recognize it in the proof of chain rule. However, just remembering that you can cancel at any point, so I've done that here. Now, in the next step, it's going to seem, again, what I'm about to do is not very obvious, okay? so. Again, don't think as if you're expected to know what the next step is. However, what I expect for you to do is understand why mathematically the next step is correct and why that can be done. Okay? So if I write down the expression of difference between the y coordinates, and if I was to add and subtract the same expression, then that would mean that this expression in its sense is exactly the same. So if I was to add, I'll do it in pencil, if 
I was to add an x here and subtract an x, that is going to have no impact on my expression whatsoever because because it cancels out to nothing. Okay? So what we're going to do is, and that's what's happened, is we're going to add two same components uh, oh, sorry, we're going to add and subtract the same component to this whole expression. So I'm going to extend it now, which means it's all over h. So I'm going to add f of x plus h g of x, and I'm going to subtract the same thing. Now there's a reason why this particular expression has been taken rather than anything else and that's got something to do with the factors. And if you are looking at the factors, I hope you remember the advanced factorizing that we did when we started to look at product rule. And so if you think about the product rule and the factorizing that you're expected to do there, well the same thing is going to be used in the proof as well. Okay, so that's why the whole expression, so if this thing over h is being added and that thing over h is being subtracted, that's why I've just extended the numerator line, that means it's all over h, and um, so if I subtract the same thing and add the same thing, it means it's equal to one, it's equal to nothing, sorry, and therefore that has no bearing on this expression whatsoever. And now because I want to take my proof forward, I'm going to rearrange in the way they are written, which allows me to factorize them. Okay, so now I'm going to, and this is, this could be your trial and error moment. You could think about which ones can I group for me to get back to the original um, proof, get back to the original notation that you're meant to be getting. Or you can just um, look at what I do and then hopefully try and remember that. It's up to you. You're not expected to be able to replicate these proofs in an exam, so don't worry about that. These are just so you understand where the maths is coming from. Okay? So now here we're going to combine the f of x plus h, g of x plus h, with the minus f of x plus h, g x. Just going to write them down. I will have to write quite small for me to fit everything on the same line. All I'm doing is I'm just rearranging things, okay? Nothing else. What I'm going to do at the same time is I'm going to split. Um, so I have, instead of having this denominator once, I'm going to have it twice. Now you'll know from your understanding of mathematics if you've got 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4, um, then it just gives you the denominator stays the same, okay? So if I'm splitting up a com common denominator, the denominator will just stay the same. And now we've got this expression and this expression together, and we're going to have these two together, okay? So we've got plus f of x plus h g of x minus f of x g of x all over h. Now is where your advanced factorizing comes in. Remembering that limit as h tends towards zero. We've still got h um, within our expression, so we have to still keep writing the limit h tends towards zero. Once that goes, once any of the h has disappeared, then we know there is no longer h available, so we don't need to keep writing it. And this is where the advanced factorizing will come in. So think about what's in common. Okay, so we've got this in common here, and we've got this in common here. So we're going to take those common factors out. And that's why we split the fraction, so we don't get muddled up between them. So I can now say f of x plus h, and open up my bracket, g of x plus h minus g of x, 
and the denominator h can stay here. I could have just left all over h, but there's a reason why I've written it like that. And you'll know mathematically, it means the same thing. Okay? Plus, here I'll take out the g of x, and I do the same thing. I would have to multiply g of x by f of x plus h, and then I'd have to multiply it by a negative f of x. All of that is over h, and if I multiply this out, it will give me the expression on top. I've successfully factorized with the ones I'd underlined. And now, I'm going to give you a few seconds just to look at what's on your screen and see if you notice something with those expressions. Particularly, these ones in brackets. There's loads of things in brackets, so I'm going to just make a cloud around it. And you'll notice that, that those two expressions, it goes back to your first video about differentiation from first principles. Those two expressions are, in fact, indeed, the derivatives. This one is the derivative of g of x and this one is the derivative of f of x. So we write down limit. As h tends towards 0, we've got an expression for the gradient f of x plus h. This becomes the derivative of g of x. So we write it in that notation. Plus, this stays as it is, g of x. And this thing has become the derivative of f of x. Now, it looks very similar to what we started to prove. There's just a little teeny tiny error that we need to just make sure. Not an error, but there's just a little teeny tiny um, h that we need to clarify. And here you say, as h tends towards 0, h equals 0. Because the gap between those two coordinates is tending towards 0, we are ultimately trying to get it to equal 0, so the gradient function is exact. Therefore, this f of x plus h you had now becomes f of x. So this is just your side note in the proof. And your final conclusion is dy by dx is, and this is where all of this line will get rewritten. The f of x plus h has now become f of x. It's now it's being multiplied by the derivative of g of x plus g of x being multiplied by the derivative of f of x. And this is the proof of the product rule from first principles.